Praise God, sisters and brothers, and welcome to the webinar or the special session on uh, the blessed life. Uh, we, uh, the Lord is, uh, we are in the presence of the Lord. We are uh, with beautiful music, uh, gospel songs we played, preparing our hearts, and then Priya led us into a uh, short and a brief time of worship. And now it's the time for us to truly, truly ponder and listen on the word of God. So we are, this webinar is very important at the start of this new year. Because what the word of God tells us, if we do, then this talk will become a reality in our life. You will live the blessed life. You will live the blessed life. So what is the blessed life? What am I aiming at, right? You see, the blessed life consists in experiencing the abundant blessings of the Lord in every area of our life. That's important. In every area of our lives, in our marriages, with our children, in our finances, in our work, in our job, business, in our, uh, what to say, ministry, health. So we need to experience the blessed life in, uh, uh, in every area of our lives. And that is why it is so important for us to, uh, to make sure we commit our lives to Jesus, make him the Lord of our lives, so that we can experience the blessed life. The blessed life is for every single man and woman who lives his life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. In the power of the Holy Spirit. So, the blessed life is nothing but God's favor, abundant favor. His provision, his happiness, his peace. His security, his health. You see, this is the abundant life. And this life is available to every single Christian who lives their life in Jesus Christ. It's available to all of us. That's why I thought, you know, we must give this talk at the beginning of this year so that, you know, in case we need to do some little correction in our lives, we do that so that we experience the abundant blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the blessed life. So the blessed life is all about in these five areas. Every single area of our lives will be blessed as never before. What are those areas? Surely my spiritual life, my material life, my emotional life, my physical life, my social life, my financial life, everything the Lord will take care. And we will start living in every single area the blessed life. We will start living a life of a pleasing to the Lord. This is the blessed life and God wants us to live. Why? Simply because we are sons and daughters of God. We are the children of God. That's why all that the Lord wants us to do is he wants to bless us and live the blessed life. And because he wants us to make sure we, we live the blessed life and we, and we experience his abundant, abundant, abundant blessings in every area of our lives. You see, when this happens, when we're living this blessed life, we become like a well-oiled machine. <laughs> well-oiled machine. What does it mean? Everything is working well in accordance to God's plan and purpose, in accordance to God's will. We have become like a well-oiled machine because the blessed life is that. The blessed life is when every area of your life and everything is moving smoothly, well-oiled machine. Every detail, single thing of your life is working for good and it is working well and you're experiencing the blessings of the Lord, his plan and his purpose is getting accomplished in your life. Amen. Praise God. See, that is the life that the Lord has promised for us in the word of God. That is the life we will experience when we live our life in Christ, in Christ. We become the sons and daughters of God, joint heirs with Christ, so that everything is available to each one of us. All that God has is available to each and every one of us. So, you see, brothers and sisters, blessings are in store for us. Blessings are in store for us. Isaiah 43 verse 18 says, For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? Look at this word of God. This word, scripture tells, I am about to do something new. 
this is very important for us, right? In the beginning of this new year, God is going to do something new. It does not matter <clears throat> how last year was, how yesterday was. It does not matter. What matters is the Lord is promising us that he will do something new. And it goes on to say, I have already begun it. And you see, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, the work that God has begun in our life, he will bring it to completion. The work that God has begun in his life, he will bring it to completion. How amazing, isn't it? When God starts a work, he will complete it. He does not do a work half done. No, that is not God. So God is saying here, I have already begun. He will bring it to completion. I have already begun this work. Do you not see? Ah, now here comes our part. What is our part? We need to see how through our spiritual eyes. We need to see it. How? Through faith, through hope. You see, faith gets us started. It's like, you know, a, a running race, you're on the blocks, waiting for the signal, for the gunshot, so that you can take off. You're on the blocks. Faith is that. Hope is running the race. So faith will get you started. Hope will help you to finish the race. That's why faith and hope are very important in the word of God. Romans tells us, the book of Romans tells us, Hope does not disappoint us. Look at that. So if we have hope in our heart, if we have hope in our life, it will not disappoint us. We need to see that the Lord has started this new work in our lives in faith and hope. Then we will see the blessings coming. Do you not see? Do you not see? You see, another version puts it so well. Do you not perceive? What is perceive? In the future can't you see it happening seeing it happening in faith foresight to look into the future don't you perceive important for us we need to release our faith god is saying i'm going to do a new work i've already started it what is important from us part to release our faith this supernatural faith release our faith and trust and hope in the lord that what god has promised us is what is going to uh, in the scripture in this uh, teaching what god has promised us he will bring to completion that's why 2 corinthians 4 verse 18 saint paul says so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal how important you see that is faith and hope right we don't see the natural what is happening around me my situation my circumstances maybe we are praying and things are not changing around us that we are looking at our natural eyes the word of god is saying look with your spiritual eyes believe hope have faith that god has started to change your situation your circumstances <laughs> you have to believe that then you will see it to completion so this is how we always work in our life. We are called, as you and I are called as Christians, to walk by faith and not by sight. See that? We walk by faith, not by sight. This is our walk. It's a supernatural walk. And that's why hope does not disappoint us. Because if you want to walk the supernatural walk, it needs hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Very, very important for us as we start the beginning of this year. In uh, uh, Isaiah 43 verse 19, the Lord is saying, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry waste land. You see, it's amazing, isn't it? I am amazed at this scripture. I will create a pathway through the wilderness. However difficult our lives were, however, um, you know, our lives may be out of being empty, disillusioned, dry, like a desert, the Lord is saying, don't worry. I have started a new work. I will create and make a pathway in the wilderness. How beautiful, no? Look at this picture. God will create a pathway. God will make a way. Amen. 
God will make a way through the Holy Spirit for us. He will make a way. In the wilderness, He will make a way. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Rivers signify life. What does always signify is life. The Lord is saying, I will create rivers. I will create life. And rivers and waters, we know, also signifies the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. If our, if our heart and our soul is like a dry wasteland, the Lord is saying, don't worry. I will create a river out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. John 7, right? 37. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. What must I do then? Hey, connect to the Holy Spirit. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Develop an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues more and more and uh, every day, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, extra, extra. I am telling you, the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will make a way. He will make that pathway. He will create a river. He will create it for you. Amen. How wonderful. This is the Lord's promise for us in this new year. I want to ask you a question. Maybe some questions. Just to reflect, you know. How was last year for you? How was it? Did it go well? Did it go the way you wanted it to go? Hmm. Did your dreams and aspirations become a reality? Or everything was like an illusion, a bubble that bursts? Nothing. There doesn't seem to be any movement. In fact, there seems to be, uh, I've gone backwards into, instead of going forward. The Lord will make a way. Amen. He will create a river and he will create a pathway for you. Revelation 21 verse 5 says, Behold, I make all things new. Amen. Behold, I make all things new. All things. All things. Wow. Whatever was not right, he will set it right. Amen. He will restore things to you. He will restore your marriage. He will restore your children. He will restore your finances. He will restore your health. He will restore your job. Hey, that is how our God is. He will restore it so that, so that you live the blessed life. So the question is, who will experience the blessed life? It's a very important question. Who will experience the blessed life? You see, if you want to experience the blessed life, my dear sisters and brothers, there must be this divine human partnership. Divine human partnership. Collaboration. Cooperation with God, the Holy Spirit. Then, all that is in store for you that the Lord is promising will become part of your life. Simple. All that the Lord wants to give you. You will start experiencing the blessed life. All that God wants to give you. So the question is, who will experience the blessed life? Here are a few things. Who will experience the blessed life? Those who take refuge in the Lord. Amen. Those who take refuge in the Lord. Psalm chapter 5 verse 11 says, But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them. That those who love your name may rejoice in you. See what the psalmist is saying. But let all take refuge in you and be glad. Refuge. We run to the Lord. The Lord is our ref refuge. Not people. The Lord is our refuge. We run to him. We, is, we make Jesus our first resort, not our last resort. He is our salvation. He is our fortress. He is our tower. He is our shield. Who? The Lord. Those who take refuge in him will experience the blessed life. <coughs> Excuse me. Then it will make you glad. Why people are not happy today? Why they cannot smile? 
because the blessed life has escaped them. Anybody experience the blessed life, there will be a smile and I'm sure there will be a song. Right? Of course. And then the Lord goes, the word, word of God says here, uh, let them ever sing. Look at that. Ever sing. You'll sing, of course, for joy. Spread your protection. You see, when you make the Lord your refuge, your strength, your shelter, the Lord will spread his protection upon your life. Amen. How amazing, right? It's like a mother hen. Yeah, who gathers the chicks under her wings. Protection. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, Jesus is telling this, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, how often I would like to gather you as a hen gathers its chicks under her wings, but you would not. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, the people of God, you and me, how I desired, how I long to gather you under my wings. Like a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. See, we are the problem. We don't want. We only think of God in crisis, in trouble, in difficulty, in illness, in sickness. That's the only time we think of God. We need to make God our refuge 24 bar 7, 365 days. He must be a shelter, he must be a shield. And he says here that those who love your name may rejoice in you. We must love the name of the Lord. Is Jesus the name of Jesus, which is above every other name, to which every knee will bow and tongue will confess, is that name on your lips? every day and how often is it on your lips how often is it on your lips the most powerful name to which every knee will bow every tongue will confess that jesus is lord have you experienced the power of the name of jesus spread your protection that those who love your name may rejoice rejoice you need to fall in love with jesus Maybe all over again. Yeah. Maybe some of us have lost our first love for Jesus. First love. Now all, so many other things have come into our lives. So Jesus, the love for God is, you know, among many other things. We don't love him above everything else. Then it's only when you and I love Jesus and put him the first and there is this first love for him, will I experience the blessed life. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see. What does this mean, taste and see? It's like Andrew telling Peter in, in, the, in the Gospels, come and see. Taste and see means what? Encounter the Lord. Surrender your life. Have a personal relationship with him. Taste and see. Encounter him. Come to him. Know him. Make him your refuge. Make him your shield, your shelter, your fortress. That the Lord is good. Blessed is that man who takes refuge in him. Oh, wonderful, isn't it? The next point. Who are those who live the blessed life? Who will experience the blessed life? Those who dwell in the house of the Lord. When you dwell in the house of the Lord, you will experience the blessed life. Psalm 84 verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Look at that. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. The house of the Lord is within us. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us. That's why we should become more and more aware that we too dwell in the temple of the Lord. Right? Are we dwelling in the temple of the Lord? It's not enough to say, hey, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's true. But are you living in it? That is the presence of God. That is the house of the Lord. 
then they are praising you you see praise will you know praise will just um, envelope from your life gush forth from your life because you are dwelling in the house of the lord you're living in the presence of the lord you're living in the power of the holy spirit and romans 8 verse 14 they that are led by the spirit of god are the children of god you see when you're led by the spirit of god when we say we are the children of god what does this mean we are experiencing the blessed life we're experiencing all that god has in store for us we're experiencing that it's not just enough to say they that are led by the spirit of god are, are the children of god but as the children of god we should experience what god has in store for us right and that's why uh, saint paul says in galatians 5 25 since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit yeah you see when you're led by the spirit of god you're in tune with the holy spirit you're in step with the holy spirit you're sensitive to his leading you're sensitive to his voice you're sensitive to his guidance what a blessed life that's blessed life you're you're praying more in tongues so that you know you become so much more um uh sensitive to his the presence of the lord and you can be sure you're in the presence of the lord you dwell in the presence of the lord who are those who experience the blessed life those who avoid sin you see that psalm chapter 1 verse 1 blessed is the one who does not walk walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers look at that psalm chapter 1 verse 1 those who avoid sin then only you'll experience the blessed life right light and darkness don't go together as a christian there must be only light because jesus is the light of the world blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked what does it mean here it means to say the wicked means i'm not following the advice of the ungodly of the unbeliever of the wicked i'm not following the example of the wicked the ungodly i don't imitate them i don't imitate their ways i don't imitate their speech i don't imitate their lifestyle i don't imitate their morals i don't imitate their beliefs i don't imitate their what to say values <clears throat> that is how it is those who avoid sin will experience the blessed life then you'll be like a for fortunate you're fortunate because you're blessed and god's favor will be upon your life you know and also this you know uh, uh, those who avoid sin also which means avoiding the occasions of sin isn't it occasions of sin 1 corinthians 15 verse 33 says bad company corrupts good character who are our companions what are my friendships with who do i chat facebook or whatsapp who do i chat with who do i spend a majority of my time with we all know this famous statement show me your friends and i will tell you who you are friends and the company we keep are a good indicator of who we are how much christian we are it's a good indicator right proverbs 4 4 23 says guard your heart that's why above all else for it determines the course of your life guard your heart guard your emotions guard it don't get let not your emotions get tossed to and fro and pull you in the wrong direction guard it what a nice word right guard your guard your heart it determines the course of your life that's why we don't make decisions just out of our heart we use the mind also you see that is prudence and that's what we need wisdom so guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life if you just follow your feelings if you just follow your emotions you just blindly follow your heart you can be on the wrong path how many people have made this mistake Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. How to avoid sin? Here it is. The best way to avoid sin is to make sure you hide God's word in your heart. Let the word of God take root in your life, sisters and brothers. Memorize. You know, 
this year memorize the word of god no the year of the word of god memorize the word of god at least 20 scriptures in a year memorize it you are hiding the word of god in your heart the word of god is taking root in your life it's that seed incorruptible seed will make you incorruptible amen that is the power of the seed the word of god for those who experience the blessed life those who show concern for the weak right those who have a heart for the poor the downtrodden the marginalized the people who don't have much psalm 41 verse 1 says blessed is the one who considers the poor in the day of trouble the lord will deliver him look at that having something to share with them concern for them compassion for them love for them mercy for them blessed is the one who considers the poor in all that he does in all that he does arms giving generosity in the day of trouble the lord will deliver that person those who help the poor those who have a concern for the poor the lord will deliver them that is what psalm 41 verse 1 1 says deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 10 says give generously to him to him means here the poor give generously to the poor and do not let your heart be grieved when you do so and because of this the lord your god will bless you in all your work and in everything to which you put your hand when you give generously and you consider the poor the lord is saying i will bless you in all your work in everything you do whatever you do the lord will bless you in everything he will put in everything you put your hand he will bless you whatever you wherever you go you'll be blessed you go to someone's house they get blessed because of you look at that you buy a piece of land in a place in a neighborhood in a gated colony the whole colony gets blessed because of you and you also get blessed right yeah that's how it is you work in a company you joined a job you're working in a company the whole company is blessed why because of you because you're living the blessed life that blessed life you know it's just you know moves around travels such is everybody everybody is blessed because of you when you go somewhere people will say i'm so blessed to meet you i'm so blessed that you came to my place this is the power you go to a party the party is blessed we see that in the life of jesus marriage feast event the whole marriage feast was blessed hmm. that's the blessed life who are those who will experience the blessed life those who follow the ways of jesus you see luke 6 uh, 20 to 22 says looking at his at, at his disciples he said blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of god here the word poor is meek poor in the spirit you see look blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of god when you have this meekness meekness yours is the kingdom of god what is the kingdom of god righteousness peace joy all this will become part of your life that's the blessed life become part of your life so amazing right so the blessed life here is to be spiritually prosperous look at that amazing you'll you'll grow in your walk with god you'll be happy you'll be contented you'll be admired by other people they will follow the, your ways you will be a role model wow so amazing isn't it <clears throat> poor here means the word poor here means poor in spirit those devoid of spiritual arrogance those who regard themselves as insignificant the Lord is saying the kingdom of God is yours. Wow. What does it mean? Peace will be yours. Joy will be yours. Righteousness will be yours. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. 
That's why it is so important <coughs> to have this divine human partnership. Yours is the kingdom now and forever. Okay. So who are those who will, who will experience a blessed life? Those who hear and obey God's word. This is very important, right? Luke 11, 28. Jesus replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And so many people are guilty of this, right? They only hear. How many people? Only hear, hear, hear. We have itching ears. We always want to hear something new, something new. We don't practice anything. We are from one place to another place, from one center to another center, from one webinar to another webinar. We are, we are messed up. Itching ears. And that's why St. Paul says, because of that, you're tossed by every wind of doctrine, he says. You're tossed. You just don't know what to follow. Because so much is coming in. And then what happens? Worst is what happens? You don't follow anything. You're only obey. You're hearing, 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 hearing. How dangerous it is. Because only if you hear the word of God and do nothing about it, hardness of heart will set in. Hardness of heart. One must be very, very careful of this. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the, this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear and obey what is written in it. Because the time is near. Blessed are those who hear and obey what is written in the word of God. The time is near. Obedience to God's word is important. Obedience. It's not about devotion. It is hearing the word of God and obeying the word of God. James tells us, right? We all know the scripture. Don't be hearers only, but be doers also. If you want to experience the blessed life this year, so critical. So critical. All that you have heard, are you putting it into practice? Are you applying it in your life? Makes the difference. That's why in Luke 8 21, Jesus replied, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God, carry it out. Look at that. My mother and my brother are those people who hear the word of God and do it, carry it out, put it into action. That's what Jesus is looking for. For people who hear the word of God and carry it out. Who? will experience the blessed life, those who persevere in their faith. <clears throat> James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Look at that. Blessed is the one who perseveres. What is persevere? Persistence. <clears throat> Persistence. I don't give up. I persevere. Doesn't matter what happens. I continue to pray in tongues. Doesn't matter what happens. Perseverance. You see that? Perseverance. That is perseverance. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Look at that. When things are not going your way. Mm -hmm. When things are not going your way, you still persevere. You never give up. You never give up. You're not a faint Christian. You're a strong Catholic. When, when, when crisis comes, when suffering comes, when persecution comes, if at all sickness comes, you will still persevere. Because having stood the test, I like that word, stood the test. When do we say, hey, this guy stood the test? When he went through a trial, when he went through the process, when he went through a crisis and came out victorious. What do we say? He stood the trial. He stood the test, right? That's what we say. He stood the test. Now he's victorious because he's come through it. That is the victorious life that Jesus wants us to live. That person will receive the crown of life. Amen. The crown of righteousness. That St. Paul said that is reserved for every single person. Amazing. No? This is the blessed life. <clears throat> Luke 6, 22. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, 
reject your name as evil because of the son of man look what he's saying Be blessed are they when people hate you why they hate you because you love the son of man you love jesus because of that they will hate you because you're a catholic people will hate you yeah maybe in your work maybe there is the bias there is jealousy but don't get worried this is the word of god they will hate you they will exclude you look at that they will exclude you insult you reject you don't get worried you're in the right place you're doing the right thing you're experiencing the blessed life jesus himself said it let not panic come people sometimes panic oh this is happening yes don't worry this is what jesus said that's why persevere in your faith be persistent do what you are doing just do keep doing what you are doing you will win the battle so who will experience the blessed life those who cooperate with the holy spirit right those are willing to be led by the holy spirit those who are willing to to walk in the spirit those who are willing to have a intimate personal relationship with the holy spirit those who pray in tongues for our they are the ones who will experience the blessed life in other words here is it who will experience the blessed life those who take refuge in the lord the lord is their shelter those who dwell in the dwell in the house of the lord rejoicing knowing that god dwells within me the spirit of god dwells within me those who avoid sin and the occasion of sin see that we walk uprightly those who show concern for the weak those who show concern for the poor who give generously to the poor who who have them in their mind those who follow the ways of jesus jesus himself told us to imitate him to be like him to follow his ways to follow his in his footsteps he is our model he is our master those who hear and obey the word of god obey obedience is greater than sacrifice those who persevere in their faith persistent never give up never give up what may happen whatever may happen no worry when we we never give up then we will experience the blessed life and when we do those these things no one can block the blessings that god has for you if god is your refuge and shelter right if you hear and obey the word of god if you avoid sin if you follow the ways of jesus christ no one no one can block the blessings that god has for you no one the enemy cannot block the blessings god has for you because you are living uprightly you are living uprightly nobody can prevent the blessings of god coming to your life except you except you you can be a block to the blessings that god wants to give you you can be the block so you have to be very very careful no one can block the blessings god has for you so the question is what are the blessings of god we saw who can experience the blessings we saw that now what are the blessings in store for us you know i just um, made of uh, many blessings right you know i mean uh, the, all the five areas spiritual physical emotional financial material social all these areas will be blessed but i just chose two areas because that's all time we are going to get that's all the time what are the blessings in store for us what are the blessings this year ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ look at that god has blessed us has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in Christ. All the blessings are yours and mine. All the blessings of the Lord. All we need to do is those six things. Take refuge in the Lord. Hear and obey his word. Follow the example of Jesus. Right? Have a concern for the poor. When we do these kind of things, the blessings of the Lord will become yours. It has to become yours because you are living the blessed life. So, let us first look to two or three spiritual blessings. First one, yeah? God's favor and grace will be on your life. That's an amazing blessing. This year, we want to experience the favor of God, the grace of God in our lives and in our families. Am I right? Psalm, 50, Psalm 5 verse 12 says, for you bless the righteous. Look at that. O oh Lord, you cover him with favor as with a shield. You will bless the righteous. You will bless those who walk uprightly. You will bless the people who have integrity. The Lord will bless you. He will bless the righteous. Those who take refuge in him, the Lord will bless them. Those who hear and obey the word of God, the Lord will bless them. That is how it is. You cover him with a favor as with a shield. Look at that, amazing. What is a shield? Protection. A shield protects you from the darts of the enemy. And the word of God is saying, God is going to cover you with favor. What is favor? Grace. Unmerited. God is going to cover you with his favor like a shield. Wow. The grace of God is going to cover you. Amen. That's why you will not only be blessed this year, you will be a blessing too. Amen. You will be a blessing also. Psalm 32 verse 7 says, You are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. You are my hiding place. God should become our hiding place. Our hiding place. Our refuge. Our fortress. Our shield. Our salvation. Is God our hiding place? Or people our hiding place? We take refuge in people. Or we take refuge in God. Is God our hiding place? A question we should ask today. Is God my hiding place? If God is my hiding place, the blessings will come. I live the blessed life. You protect me from trouble. Look at that. When God is your hiding place, God will protect you from trouble. Why trouble? Why trouble? God is not our hiding place. Simple. If God is a hiding place, he will protect us from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. What does it mean? Freedom will come. Deliverance will come. There will be a song in my life. God will set me free from anything that I am going through. Anything that the enemy is trying to block me. God will set me free. There will be songs of del deliverance in my life. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Look at that. Look at that. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, you know, no good thing. That means all the blessings of the Lord, right? No good thing will he withhold from you, from them that walk uprightly. He will bless the righteous. If you walk uprightly, God will bless you. He will not withhold anything from you. You will experience the blessed life. And he will restore everything for you. He will restore everything. Everything, sisters and brothers, will fall in place in your life. You will be amazed. That's the blessed life. People will look at you, you know, and in a sense say, envy you. Wow, look at that life. Look at that life. They will come and ask you, how do you live? How do you live a life like this? We want to live a life like this. There is peace in your life. There is happiness in your life. Your family is so happy. You are doing so well in your career. 
God is the, you know, they will look at your life and say, hey, this is the life I also want. You're, you're healthy. You experience good health. It's a secret. And they'll say, well, and then you can tell, yeah, you know, see, the secret is the Holy Spirit. He is the secret. He is the one bringing life. He is the one bringing blessings. He is the one who is, you know, connecting you and tapping all the blessings God has for you. Because you are connected to him. You are plugged into the Holy Spirit. Plugged into him. Power is flowing now. Hallelujah. Peace is flowing now. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit is flowing into your life. Praise God. Because you are plugged in to the Holy Spirit. Point number two. Right? What are the spiritual blessings that we'll experience? The forgiveness of sins. Romans 4, 7 and 8 says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are forgiven. What is man looking for? The forgiveness of sin. How many people are walking around with guilt, condemnation? Because they always wonder, will my, is my sin forgiven? Will my sins for, be forgiven? What will happen if I die today? Walking in guilt, condemnation. Right? For us, Jesus has come, taken all our sin on the cross. We don't have to be like other people going to a city. Going on a pilgrimage or to have a bath in a river to cleanse ourselves. No, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us, made us clean. There is no more guilt, no more condemnation. That's the blessed life. That if I die today, I know where I'm going. Amen. I am going to my God. Amen. Blessed is the one who sin the Lord will never count against them. Hallelujah. That's the blessed life. The Lord will not count a sin against you. And that's why the word of God says in Hebrews 10, 17, their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. No more. It's wiped out, hallelujah, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's the blessed life. This assurance of salvation. Romans 10, 12 and 13. There is no distinction between Greek and Jew. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestow, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Assurance. I know the Lord. The Lord is my master. He is my savior. I have this assurance of salvation. It doesn't matter who I am, whether I'm a Jew or I'm a Greek. It doesn't matter for the Lord. Male or female, it does not matter for the Lord. For which country I come, it does not matter to the Lord. God will continue to bestow his riches all who call on him. Who call on him. And that's why Romans uh, verse 13 says here, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. That's why in the beginning I said, is the name of Jesus on your lips? Is it on his lips? Do you call upon him? Do you take his name? Even you know, when you're praying in tongues, you know, ah, you're calling on the name of the Lord too. You're praying in tongues. You're praying in tongues. You are, uh, the Lord's name is on your mind and on your lips. You're praying in tongues. You know, this is the power of God. You meditate on that name of Jesus. The most Powerful name ever. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Eternal joy. What is another spiritual blessing, you know? This is so important in today's world when so many people are just walking only in sadness, sorrow. This blessing will be yours. What's your joy? You see Psalm 21 verse 6 says, Surely you have granted him unending blessings 
and made him glad with the joy of your presence. See, it's very important. Where the presence comes from, where the joy comes from, rather, right? Where does the joy come from? From his presence. Are you aware of his presence every day, especially when you go to work or you're lost completely in work, forgotten? You only think of him during personal prayer, when you go to church. That joy will escape you. It will escape you. That's why the troubles of the world will come and we look so down and dusted and somebody will ask, why are you today like this? Look at your face. What's happened to you? Why? Joy has escaped. Why? We didn't recollect the presence of God. Joy comes from his presence. Who brings the presence of God? Makes it, who makes the presence a reality? Holy Spirit, he is in you. Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 2, verse 10, 11, 30, 31, 32 says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. Don't be fear. Joy, actually, joy takes away fear. Joy takes away fear. That's why I said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Joy means finished. Fear is gone. Fear is gone. Joy is important in our lives. We overcome fear through joy that comes from the Lord. Philippians chapter 3 verse 11 says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again and again. And it is a safeguard for you. Every, you know, brothers and sisters, Philippines was the last letter written by St. Paul when he was in the prison. From prison he's telling the Philippines, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Every one of us know the famous scripture, Philippines chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. So in the letter of Philippines you'll find this word, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. What is saying? Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. Don't worry about me, he's saying in other words. Paul, you know, people were so concerned about him, worried about him, anxious about him. He said, why are you worried about him? me? You rejoice. Hmm. Oh, amazing. Joy takes away anxiety. Joy takes away uh, stress. And joy takes away, you know, worry and tension. Joy takes away. It is a safeguard for you. What? Joy. Hmm. Against fear against anxiety, against stress, joy, eternal joy. Always, that is when you dwell in the presence of the Lord all the time. Become aware of it. Presence is with us. Presence of God is already in us. Then you will be living the blessed life. Last point. Yeah. What are the blessings we'll, we will uh, experience? As I said, one is spiritual blessing. You know, we will also experience other kinds of blessings, you know. One is peace and prosperity. Yeah. That is the blessings of the Lord. When you make him your refuge, when you hear and obey the word of God. Ezekiel 34, 26 to 30 says, I will bless my people. Look at the Lord, huh? very clear, right? I will bless my people and their homes, families, around my holy hill. And in the proper season, I will send showers they need. There will be showers of blessing. Hallelujah. I will bless my people. So blessings are only from the Lord. Blessings are from the Lord. Not troubles. Not difficulties. Blessings. There will be showers of blessings, says the Lord. What is blessings? God's favor. God's grace. If you go through a rough patch, the grace and God's favor will carry you through and you'll become victorious. That's how it is. We may go through a suffering. We may go through pain, but that's okay. That's okay. But the showers of blessings, the favor of God will carry us through and we will become victorious. Look at this. The orchards and the fields of my people will yield a bumper crops and everyone will live in safety. The orchards and the fields, for us, what does it mean? Our work. 
our jobs, our business, our ministry. <coughs> they will yield bumper crops. Amen. No more. This, they won't be bankruptcy. They won't be poverty. You have a bumper crop. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, when do we say bumper crop? When the yield is twice as greater than the original yield. Instead of 30 fold, I got 60 fold. What does it mean? Bumper crop. The Lord is promising us that, that increase. That bumper crop, your life, God will give it to you. If you know how to live the blessed life, the blessed life will be yours. Those who, uh, who will experience the blessed life, I already said, right? Those who live, you know, may God are a few, you hear and obey the word of God, follow the ways of Jesus, are concerned for the poor. That's the blessed life. You'll, when you do that, you will end up bumper cross, bumper crop. <laughs> this is the power of God, isn't it? Everyone will live in safety. Amen. How important this word is today, today in the situation we are in. So much of insecurity, so much of fear, right? The Lord is saying, everyone will live safely. Amen. To the, Lord, to the word of God. There will no longer be a prey for other nations. Wild animals will no longer devour them. They will live in safety. No one will frighten them. Amen. Ah, oh, super. They will no longer be a prey to the evil one, to the tactics of the enemy. Any government, they will be no prey. They will not be a prey to them. Whatever may happen, the enemy cannot touch you. He cannot destabilize you. He cannot prevent the blessings of God to reach you. They will live in safety and no one will frighten them. Not The enemy cannot frighten you. The virus cannot frighten you. No government can frighten you. No person can frighten you. Why? Because we are we, what we are doing. We are the children of God. Live that way. Then you will experience the blessings of the Lord. Peace and prosperity will be yours. Health and happiness and long life will be yours. Amen. Amen. How often we have been preaching about this divine health, walking in divine health. Look at the scriptures. The scriptures in the Bible are all about health and healing. You search it now. You search it. Take a concordance or go to Google and put and see. You'll be shocked. Full scriptures are only about health, healing, happiness, long life. That is the, that is the blessed life, right? Psalm 21, verse 4 and 5 says, You asked, he asked you to preserve his life, and you granted his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. How beautiful. He, he asked you to preserve his life, and you stretched his life forever. How amazing. Long life. In the word of God, long life is God's blessings. Yeah, long life. That's why the psalmist wrote, I will not. Die. Look at that. Thomas wrote that, right? 118 verse 17. Yes, 118 verse 17. I will not die. I will live and proclaim the glory of God. Because long life is God's blessing on your life. Amen. Praise God. Isn't it? Amazing. Long life. Psalm 91 verse 16 says, With long life, look at that again, I will satisfy him, show him my salvation. With long life. God's blessings. Long life. Hmm. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Look at what John is writing. He's praying. He says, I pray you will enjoy good health. I pray. Hmm. Divine health, good health is God's will. God's will, it's a sign that you're experiencing the blessed life. I pray that you may enjoy good health, even as your soul is getting along well. Look at that. Both are tied up, the spiritual and the physical. Spiritually, when I'm doing well, spiritually, when I'm doing really well, physically, I do very well. My health will improve. 
Because my spiritual life has improved greatly by praying in tongues, by meditating on the word of God, by obedience to the word of God, for, me, for, uh, for God being my refuge, for following the example of Jesus, being the disciple of Jesus. Now I'm experiencing the fruit of it. Good health. Amen. Wow, amazing, isn't it? Oh, I love this. Abundant crop and food. So again, look at this. Abundance increase. Acts chapter 14 verse 17 says, Yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their season. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Amen. What's God's promise? Plenty of food. Food will never fail you. That's the part of the blessed life. Food will never fail you. You don't have to live from, you know, hand to mouth. No. Food will not fail you. Shelter will not fail you. Clothing will not fail you. They're the basic necessities of man. He will provide for you in all the seasons. There will be plenty. Your barns will be full. Isn't it? We heard of that. Your hearts will, and fill your hearts with joy. See, how many times the scriptures talking about joy? We know this scripture, right? Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. If you want plenty of food in our life, that's why we must, I said, we must obey the word of God and do what the word of God tells. Bring the whole tithe. Look at that. Tithing brings blessings. Tithing brings... When you start tithing, you live the blessed life. How important to tithe? Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Uh -huh. Food will never fail you if you tithe. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing Underline so much, right? So much blessings that there will not be room enough to store it. Amen. The blessed life, there'll be abundance, there'll be increase. Who's saying this? The law, not me. Not me. It's the Lord who's saying this. He's saying, bring the whole tithe and I will bless you. I'll open the floodgates. They will know the, there won't be enough room to store the blessings. Wow. That's the blessed life. You'll have so much that you will give away. You can help so many people. Because of the blessed life, because of the way you live, because you tithe, now the, your storehouse is full and now you can help others, give to others, give to other places the works of evangelization, bless the poor. Wow. What an amazing life. How much joy will come when we give, right? We know that. When we help others, when we give our tithe, tremendous joy. Joy of the Lord is my strength. The last point. This is another blessing. Children and a happy home. How many people's home is not happy? There is no peace. There is stress, anxiety, no unity, no harmony. But the blessings of the Lord is a happy home. Happy home is the blessings of the Lord. Then you'll have the, you're living the blessed life. God is promising us this year, he'll do that for us. Psalm 128 verse 2 says, and you will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. The word of the Lord has spoken. Blessings will be yours. Prosperity will be yours. And then it goes on to say, your wife will be like a fruitful wine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Children are a sign of God's blessings upon your life. So important. That's why, you know, sisters and brothers, Oh, there is so much more. You can keep on speaking on it. But it's, what is important is, you know, the, when we start living the blessed life, you know, you will be amazed at your, at your life. 
your life will have influence your life will be a testimony your home will be a testimony your children will be a testimony your work will be a testimony your health will be a testimony wow. every area will be a testimony to the lord that's life what else is it so my sisters and brothers in conclusion the blessed life it's nothing but experiencing the favor of God in all our lives and our homes. In every area of our lives. Right? My spiritual life, my physical life, my material life, my financial life, my social life, my relationships. Every area is blessed. As the word of God said, you know, whatever you put your hand to, you'll be blessed. Amen. Wow. Super. That's the word of God. We experience the blessed life when we continue to walk in His presence, led by the Holy Spirit, living a life in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues and connecting and having a deep, intimate, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. We will experience the blessed life in every area of our life. We experience the blessed life when we live a Spirit-filled and Spirit-controlled life. Amen. Holy Spirit is in charge. No more me. Holy Spirit. And therefore, because now the Holy Spirit is in, in control of my life, He will release all the blessings that the Lord has in store for us. All the blessings. He has cleared the valve. He's cleared the pipe of any blockage now. He's removed the blockage now. And now flows the blessings. Amen. So the blessed life can be lived when we have a deep personal encounter with Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you. I want to praise you for my dear sisters and my brothers. I thank you for this amazing session, Lord. Thank you for blessing me, my life, my family. I pray this blessing upon my dear brothers and my dear sisters that this year will be a blessed year, Lord. As your word says in Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah, yes, Lord, Isaiah 43, verse 18. I have begun a new work. See it. See it. Perceive it. I started it. I pray for my sisters and my brothers, Lord. Oh, give them faith and hope. Faith and hope, Lord. Persistence, Lord. Perseverance. Because what you promised, you will bring it to completion. Bless my sisters and my brothers. May this year, Lord, be the best year. May this year be like a year like never, never before. May this year be a year of blessings. May this year be a year of abundance. May this year be a year of increase, oh God. A year of blessings, not only for me, so that through me, others will experience the blessings. Make my life a blessed life, Lord. Make my life a blessing to the nations. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.